I'm going to tell you the story of Fees and the Magic Fiddle. Fees lived in a little country far, far away. He lived with his grandmother, and they lived on a farm on top of a little hill. They had a house on top of the hill, and they grew all around the sides of the hill. One crop, onions, onions, delicious, beautiful onions. For breakfast they had onions, for lunch they had onions, and for dinner, onions. Well, it was a happy life, but there was one problem. And that was, there was only Fees and his grandmother to do the work. And Fees happened to be the laziest boy in the world. He was so lazy. Let me tell you, in those days, everybody was poor and they had just one shirt and one pair of pants. And if you got a tear in your shirt, well, you'd have to fix it yourself. Fees was so lazy that he never fixed the holes in his shirt. His shirt had so many holes in it that it was completely invisible. Well, one morning he woke up and he was so hungry. But let me tell you how lazy he was. He was so lazy that he laid back in bed and said, I think I'll sleep until lunch. And at lunchtime he woke up and his stomach was beginning to growl with hunger. His stomach was saying, food. But he said to himself, Ah, oh, I think I'll sleep till dinner. And he slept till dinner. And he woke up at dinner time, and now his stomach was really hungry, and his stomach was saying, Food. And Fee said, Oh, but I'm so tired. And he went back to sleep. And he slept through breakfast the next day, and lunch the next day, and dinner the next day. And on the third day, he woke up. Oh, he was so hungry. His stomach was going, Food, 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 food. He opened one eye and he saw his grandmother there and she was having some delicious onions for breakfast and he was so hungry he said, Grandmother, could you bring me breakfast in bed? Well, she was beginning to get a little tired of this and she came over and said, Fees, you are so lazy. I have never seen anybody as lazy as you are. You're so lazy. You haven't gotten out of bed in three days. And she was shaking her finger and shaking her finger. <coughs> Poor Fees. She was shaking her finger and he leaned back in the bed and he lost his balance. Do you know how hard it is to lose your balance when you're lying down in bed? Well, he lost his balance and he rolled out of the bed. Now, their little house wasn't exactly straight. It was a little crooked, and it, and it kind of went at an angle. There was a front door here and a back door, and Fee started to roll. Thump, 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 thump. Now, you or I, if we were rolling, we'd put our hands out, and we'd stop ourselves. But not Fee's, because that would be a lot of work. And thump, 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 and he rolled out the back door. Now, if we rolled out the back door, we'd put our hands and our legs out and try and stop ourselves, but not Feast, because he was so lazy, he began to roll down the hill, right between the crops of onions, down to the bottom of the hill until he hit the dirt beside the road, poosh, and he laid there in the dirt, thinking, I hope I didn't break any bones, maybe I should check, but... Oh, that was so much excitement. I think I'll take a little nap. And he fell asleep in the ditch by the road. And he was awakened by a little voice coming from behind him that said, Feast, wake up. He didn't open his eyes, but he said, Who is it? He said, It's me, Feast, it's me. And I have a deal for you. And this deal for you, this deal for you, if you do it right, Feast, this deal for you will get you something to eat. And as soon as his stomach heard that, his stomach started growling. It sounded like this. Something to eat, something to eat, something to eat, something to eat, something to eat. And Feast said, w -w -w what, what kind of a deal? And the little man said, I'm going to make you a swap. I'm going to make you a swap for this magic fiddle that I have. The little man jumped over Fees, and Fees opened one eye again, and he looked, and there was a little man about this tall with a red hat and bright blue eyes and a big gray beard and a yellow jacket and a red vest, and he had green boots up over his knees. And he said, how about it, Fees? is a deal. And Fees said, well, so you, you, you swap me, but I don't have anything to swap. And Fees said, yes, and the little man said, yes, you do, Fees. He said, your shirt. He said, but my shirt has so many holes in it, it's 
completely invisible. And the little man said, that's right. There's not another one like it in the world. Is it a deal, Feast? Now remember, this fiddle is very special. The first time this fiddle is played, all of your hunger will be obeyed. You'll get something to eat. And his stomach started to go, Feast's stomach started to go, something to eat, 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 something to eat. And the little man said, is it a deal, Feast? Because... The second time the fiddle is played from jail, you will never be taken. But all Fees heard was his stomach going, something to eat, something to eat, something to eat, something to eat. And the little man said in a quieter voice, and the third time the fiddle is played, all of your laziness will never again be displayed. Something to eat, something to eat. Feast's stomach was making such a racket. Feast said, okay, it's a deal. And the little man reached into his pocket and he pulled out of his pocket a fiddle bow and a big fiddle that was taller than he was. And Feast said, all right, but you have to take my shirt off me. And the little man said, all right. And he reached over because all he could see was buttons and grabbed the buttons, put them in his pocket and disappeared. And there was Feast sitting there and there was the fiddle. And Feast realized he didn't know how to play the fiddle. He picked it up and he kind of sat up a little bit and he tried to figure out how do you play the fiddle and all of a sudden it started to wiggle and it started to vibrate and it went right into position and it started to play. And down the road because this was the road where all the farmers brought their goods to market, came a woman, and she had on one side of her a basket full of vegetables, and balanced on the other side was a basket full of eggs, and on her head was balanced a basket full of butter. And as she walked along, she said, Oh, nice music, and she started walking in time to the music. But when she got closer, she realized she couldn't stop rocking to the music. She had to walk to the music, and she got right up to Feast, and she was getting a little whirled, and she said, stop it, and a voice came out of the fiddle and said, hop it, and the fiddle played faster. And she began to dance really fast, and she said, stop it, and the voice came out of the fiddle saying, hop it. And she was dancing so fast, now she worried about her eggs and vegetables and butter, but they flew, oh, she couldn't do anything about it, they flew up in the air. And you know what happens to things that go up in the air? They come down. And they smashed in a big pile. But she was still dancing, and she was dancing so fast that her heat generated feet. No, her feet generated heat. Yeah, her feet generated heat just, and they burned all that eggs and butter and vegetables up into a giant omelet. And when he saw that, Feast threw the fiddle down and jumped into the omelet head first and swam around eating it, eating it as much as, as fast as he could, and his stomach was going, food, 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 food. But the woman jumped up, and she went running off saying, thief, thief, he's stolen all of my goods. And she got down the road, and there was some farmers coming. They said, where, where's the thief? She said, up there, he stole my, he's magic, he stole my, my, my eggs and butter and cheese. They said, well, let's get him. And they got some sticks. And they said, let's get him, we'll take him to jail, we'll take him to jail. And Feast looked up, and he heard them coming, saying, we're going to take him to jail. Oh, what was it, the, what was it the little man said? He said, he said, oh, he had said that the second time the fiddle got played, his trip to jail would be delayed. That's what he said. Feast remembered hearing that. And so he picked up the fiddle, and he started playing again. And the farmers, they had to dance. Even with their sticks and their angry faces, they had to dance. And they were dancing around. And Feast stood up, and he danced them all around. And then he <clears throat> danced them up the hill. And in to the cottage, where his grandmother was having a bowl of onion soup. And she was holding the spoon. And she saw Feast come through playing the fiddle with a bunch of angry farmers, dancing, carrying sticks. And they danced and played all the way through the house and out the back door. 
when they got out the back door, one of them said, Stop it! And the fiddle played faster. And somebody said, Stop it, stop it! And it, the fiddle went hop and hop and hop and played faster, faster. And now they were dancing around. They were dancing around. And they were going crazy and they were so tired they said, If you stop, we will not take you to jail. And Feast said, Okay. You promise? They said, yes, yes, we promise. They jumped up, and as fast as they could, before he started playing again, they ran away. And Feast went into the house and put the fiddle down on the table. And his grandmother, still sitting there, she didn't know what she had just seen. She said, I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. And she picked up the fiddle. And she walked over to the fireplace, and she was going to throw it in the fireplace when she remembered that when she had been a little girl, she always wanted to play the violin, and... Maybe she'd play it once before she threw it in the fireplace. And so she picked up the violin and she started to play. And this is what came out. And the only person in the room was Fies, who, even though he didn't want to, had to stand up and dance. <laughs> When she saw that, the grandmother smiled, and she danced him up onto the table. And down. And pretty soon, he said, stop it. She said, Pinky swear. He said, oh, yes. And she stopped playing. And Fies got his breath. Oh, he said, but I feel so tired. But, but you know, I'm, I'm going to go right out. I'm going to start working. I'm just going to go in the fields. And he went out. And he went out. And he was worked from, oh, you've never seen anybody work like that. He became famous for working hard. And every so often he'd feel a little lazy, and whenever he did, his grandmother would say, You know, it's been a long time since we've had any music around here. And she would go over toward the chest where she had put the fiddle, and Fuchs would say, No, 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 I'm going to go work now. And he would run out, and he would work. And so they were both very content for the longest time. But one day, his grandmother saw a notice. And the notice said that the princess of that little, t that little country had a terrible affliction, and it was that she couldn't dance. And there was a notice. The king said, anyone who came would come and help my daughter to dance. Well, if that person would be invited to lunch, and perhaps they could become good friends. Well, the grandmother said, you know, Feast, you ought to do this because, you know, take that fiddle and go, and uh, I bet you could help her to dance because it's a terrible thing not to dance, and, you know, you might make a good friend out of it. And he said, well, that sounds like a good idea. And the more he thought about it, the more he thought it was a great idea. And finally, he went to get the fiddle out of the chest, and it was gone. Oh, now he was frustrated. What am I going to do? I, I really want to play for the princess. Well, well, he got himself a brand new pair of boots, and he said, I'm going to go. You know, I'm a hard worker now. I can learn. I'm, I can learn quickly. I, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go learn dance music. I think, where will I go first? I think... I'll go to, where do they dance? I know, Ireland. And he went to Ireland. And he went to Ireland. And he learned how to play on the penny whistle. And he came back. And he walked up to the palace. And there were the doormen. And the wipe up the floormen. And the footmen and the coachmen. And the gardeners. And the landsmen. And then the maids. The upstairs maids and the downstairs maids. And the ladies in waiting. And the dukes and the earls and the courtiers. And the princes and the viscounts and the regular counts, and the count to tens, and the king, and the queen, and the princess. Oh, she was very sweet, but so sad looking. But she tried to smile at him, and he said, I will now play for you Irish dance music. It's the perfect thing. Oh, 
wall and he looked around and you could tell everybody wanted to dance but they were all looking at the princess and she was just trying to move and she couldn't do it and she looked so sad and everyone else looked sad and Fee said wait wait I, I know I, I, I'll be back I'll, I, I'll go somewhere else I'll learn some more music and he ran out of the palace now he decided where where shall I go where shall I go I know where's the great dance music they have great dance music in in Louisiana I'll go and learn Cajun music. And he walked all the way there. It took him no time because he was so, 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 so efficient. And he got to Louisiana and he brought back a Cajun accordion. He learned to play it on the way. <coughs> and he came in and there were the footmen and the doormen and the dukes and the earls and the groundsmen and everybody, all the courtiers and all the lords and ladies gay and all the, the upstairs maids and down. He called them all in and he said, all right, now listen to this. We're going to play some Cajun music. <laughs> to dance you could tell they wanted to dance and the princess oh she just wanted but she couldn't do it if he said okay okay I, i'll be back i'll be back and he ran out of the palace where was he gonna go next where would he go he knew where to go he went to bulgaria because they have the best dance music there it's in seven and he started to play he learned this instrument which is called a tambourine and he brought it back and he came in and Came where everybody called everybody in the dukes and the ladies and all the doormen and the footmen and all everybody called him in and said, All right, here we go, here we go. <laughs> but they couldn't do it. They just couldn't move. And so, and so he said, look, I, I know, I know, I'll go, I'll go further, I'll go further. And he ran out of the palace and he ran all the way, all the way to China. He came back. He learned to play on the Hulusi, gentle, soft, but compelling dance music. He called everybody in, lords, ladies, Dorman, footman, all the crew, everybody in there. They're all waiting. They're all waiting. They're hoping. They're so hoping. The princess is hoping. Everyone's hoping. Everybody wanted to dance, but they couldn't do it. Oh, well, he ran out of the palace. He said, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else. And he went, oh, man, he where'd he go? Where, 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 he, went, he went to, he went, he said, square dance music. That's the answer. Square dance music. their bodies were in the princess was all oh, there was a tear in her eyes she wanted to dance but she couldn't do it oh she said all right all right all right all right don't worry don't worry i'll be back i'll be back where will i go now where will i go now i know i know sweden oh they play the wonderful whirly dances i'll go to sweden and he went to sweden and no time at all he walked all the way there and all the way back he came back with a swedish bagpipe 
but he looked askance. He called them all in. But... to whirl so badly. Even the princess, you could see her making all almost whirly motions with her eyes, but she couldn't do it. Oh, he was so sad. He left. He ran away. He ran out. Where could he go now? Where could he go now? Oh, what kind of music? What kind of music? He had it. He was going to go learn to play a little bit of ragtime. He came running back, called everybody in. He said, all right now, everybody, get ready. Here we go. were quivering they wanted to dance so much oh but no one could dance if the princess couldn't dance and now what could he do he tried everything 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 wait a minute there was one more thing he walked again all the way from their little kingdom to nashville that's where he went he went to nashville that was it this was the last thing. This would do it. This would do it. Here they go. Oh. You, you'd have thought that they were made of stone, except if you looked in their faces. Oh, they were so sad. They couldn't dance. The princess couldn't dance. No one could dance. And at last, he walked out the door, and he sat down, and he sat down, and he was, there were tears in his eyes. Poor Fis, he'd tried so hard. He had walked all around the world. As he looked down, he noticed he'd walked around the world so much that his shoes had become completely invisible from so many tears and holes in them. And as he was looking down at his shoes, he heard a familiar voice that said, Feast, Feast, hey, I have a deal for you. He said, where are you? What, what? And the little man, that same little man appeared. He said, Feast, I have a deal for you. I took the fiddle back because you weren't using it, but I'll trade it back to you for your shoes. He said, that's a wonderful deal here. I'll even take them off for you if I can find them. And he gave the little man his shoes, and he walked back in to the palace. And everybody was just sitting there so sad and mopey. And they saw Fis with a violin, and they didn't have any hope at all. But he said with a smile, listen. feet started to tap and they were worried because they weren't supposed to tap their feet unless the princess could tap her feet and they all looked at the princess and they looked at her feet <clears throat> and they were starting to move to sway her hips a little bit. And she started to move her arms. And everybody else started to move.
slowly at first. And then a little bit faster. And the king danced with the queen. And everybody <clears throat> danced with everybody else. And it was the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. They were smiling. They were crying tears of joy. They were dancing. All the joy they'd held back all those years. And the princess was smiling brighter than anyone. And she danced up to feast. And she gave him the biggest smile of all. all night long and they were not tired a bit and in the morning they all had breakfast together and Feast stayed for lunch and he stayed for dinner and pretty soon he was best friends with the princess and they all danced every night from then on and had a wonderful life.